From the very inception of the war in Ukraine, I have been a vocal critic of the kleptocrat, thug and war criminal Vladimir Putin, his venal cronies and his war of aggression in Ukraine. I contributed what little I could to help Ukraine's traumatized population. But the recent trial of Elena Kolbasnikova in Germany is reminiscent of Russia's mistreatment of dissidents. Kolbasnikova is a vocal proponent of both Putin and the war in Ukraine. She parrots the Kremlin's counterfactual and propagandistic conspiracy theories. Ukraine, she says, is ruled by Nazis who have been perpetrating genocide against the denizens of the Donbas region. This is all deplorable and abhorrent, but it sits well within the confines of her inalienable human right to speak her mind. She possesses this right like each and every one of us. And yet, a court in Germany just sentenced uh, Kolbasnikova to a fine for her outspoken political opinions. She barely evaded a three years prison sentence. The state prosecutor in her case was being less than truthful when he denied that the charges had anything to do with the fact that the accused liked Russia or its president or had criticized the German and Ukrainian authorities, which he has. Freedom of expression ends where the approval of crimes begin, begins, he thundered self-righteously. What crimes? <laughs> Russia's invasion of Ukraine, an act of military aggression, constitutes a crime, it seems, under German law. Kolbasnikova's repeated calls for peace in Ukraine were cynical, insisted the prosecutor. The judge concurred. Russia had violated international law by invading Ukraine. The defendant's statements were apt to disturb the public peace in a mysterious way. In a chilling reminder of Germany's own past, the judge pointed out that one was not allowed to say everything in Germany. But it is not the role of the legal system in any civilized country to effectuate mind reading, Kolbasnikova's alleged cynicism. It is not the role of a court in any, any tribunal in any civilized country to ban debates over geopolitical events and over the applicability of international law in specific cases. That's what not courts are for. Not all misinformation is created equal. Fabrications regarding the COVID-19 vaccinations or vaccines these fabrications bear little consequences. War propaganda, on the other hand, is often laughable and rarely believed by anyone. There is also a hypocritical double standard here. Israeli settlements are illegal. I do not recall a single one of their vociferous supporters being brought to justice in Germany or anywhere else in that, for that matter. Nor did anyone pay a personal price for publicly supporting the West's involvement in the wars in Kosovo and in Iraq, both of which were of dubious legal provenance, and I'm being charitable here. What about the fans in Germany of the dictator Erdogan in Turkey? Why are they not being prosecuted? Crises in the life of individuals and of collectives often push us to emulate the adversary. We take on the attributes and assume the misconduct of an abuser in our life, a less than savory regime or an inhuman ideology. Rather than doing this, we should fight to preserve our liberal democratic identity and fearlessly uphold our values. We should make scarce and sparse use of the state's monopoly on violence, the judicial kind, first and foremost. 
the way we go, the way we should go, about liars and the lies that they're spreading is not to muzzle them. We should not become that which we decry. We need to confront each fabulist with the incontrovertible truth to attach to each prevarication or confabulation the countervailing data that refute them. We must insist on a balanced presentation of every point of view with multiple angles of every controversy amply and aptly represented. We need fact checkers, not censors. We need crowdsourcing, not courts. We need eyewitnesses, not armchair analysts. This was a bad day for justice and for human rights in that courtroom in Germany. Let us hope it is an aberration and not a harbinger.